Hey, welcome everyone into, uh, well, I guess this is part two of our Volkswagen case study. We're looking at a high pressure side uh, trouble code P2293 on our 06 uh, Jetta 2 liter here. If you didn't catch part one, make sure to take a look at that where we kind of do some of the diag and uh, actually swapped out the high pressure pump on there. So as you guys can see, I have two high pressure fuel pumps sitting on the bench here and no high pressure fuel pump mounted into this engine under the hood. Those of you that said the cam is toast, um, maybe you were making bets. Uh, unfortunately, that does appear to be the case because I went out, test drove this thing, graphed my data as you can see here, and uh, wide open throttle type, high load situations. We are still uh, over that 217 PSI discrepancy from actual to desired. So we did not fix the car and, and I kind of had this little bit of a gut uneasy feeling um, that it wasn't going to fix it but because it's my own car and, and it's a pretty easy to pump to change out, I had one sitting from the original engine that was in this car, I decided to give it a shot, right? Might, might as well give it a shot. Uh, I was hoping that we wouldn't have to get to the camshaft itself. But a lot of guys, uh, a lot of you guys called that the camshaft was toast on here. And honestly, if this were a customer vehicle, I would have approached this completely differently. I would have approached this as uh, your follower has significant wear. The camshaft is suspect. Here's the TSB that explains that we could have camshaft failure. I would suggest that you replace the camshaft, the follower, and also the high pressure fuel pump. That's the way I probably would have approached this had this been an actual customer car in the shop rather than my own car that I'm trying to just keep on the road for as little as possible. So before we get to inspecting this camshaft, I just wanna quickly look at the data that we captured uh, before and after our, uh, our high pressure fuel pumps when, they're, when the original one was in there for this engine and then when we swapped in the other one. Captured data with the lab scope on, uh, we captured current as well as the ground side control. Now, with this style of pump, we are gonna feed it power all the time to this, this uh, the solenoid essentially on top of here and then we're going to ground side control and what that's doing that's actually opening the solenoid and allowing the high pressure fuel to flow into the rail uh, if we unplug this connector we no longer have have high fuel pressure we have uh, whatever the pump in the tank is producing so um, we're able to actually watch this and we should see similar to a fuel injector where we actually have an opening and a closing of our of our solenoid, of our pintle essentially, we should see a pintle hump on both the open and the close on our, um, on our lab scope capture. But I don't really know what I was expecting to find here, so let's, let's take a look. Now, there's really nothing that's telling me what it is that I'm looking for. Um, there's no good data that I have to go off of no known good at this point, so just gonna try to kind of, kind of uh, just feel our way through this data. So I'm gonna take a look at just one of these. Now this is at warm idle. <clears throat> and uh, so we have current in red and we're pulling just under eight and a half amps, 8.3, 8.4 amps. Right there at the top, looks like we have a pintle hump. So our solenoid moved, which makes sense, right? We were creating high pressure. Our solenoid would have had to move. And then uh, right down here, it appears to be another type of, of pintle hump. So we're gonna have battery voltage flowing through our solenoid because that's the way electricity works until we apply it to ground. That's why we begin to flow our current on red and then we release it and we have a high section here in voltage where we're slightly above and it drops down and then we have a, a little hump right in there. So let's see if that little, that little spike there is consistent. It appears to be. So we have pintle hump on our current, and then we got this little guy here, and we have like a section here where it actually stays higher. Uh, let's go ahead and just quickly measure our, our on time of our solenoid right now. Get it close. Looking at roughly 4.8, 4 4.9 milliseconds um, of, in, of the on time of our, of our solenoid here. Uh, I don't know if that's good or bad at warm idle. Uh, no way to tell. But um, I don't know. If you guys have done this type of testing on here before, let me know what you think. Uh, let's go ahead and just quickly take a look at some 
different RPM variations. So this was at 3000 RPM. You can see uh, a similar, it looks like we have a much greater, greater pintle hump on here. So we have our, our, our movement there. We have movement here. We have a longer period where our, our voltage is slightly higher and it drops down. Do we have that little, that little spike? Eh, maybe right here. We see it drop down for a little bit, then it comes back up and drops back down. Um, we don't have that nice little, that nice little blip in there like we did before. And again, this is at 3000 RPM warm. Pretty consistent here with the pintle hump here and the pintle hump somewhere. Almost looks like there's two there. And again, this is at 3000 RPM. And then let's go ahead and really take a look where I went wide open throttle. Uh, maybe right in here. Now you'll see, take that. All right, so maybe there's a little pintle hump there. Hard to tell exactly here. And I'm not sure if the valve itself is just floating at this point. Um, and it's actually, because we're wide open throttle, it's just stuck wide open. We're sitting at um, an on time of 1.6 milliseconds here. So this thing is being cycled very quickly on and off. Uh, it's possible that the, the solenoid itself isn't, isn't actually uh, fully closing. And actually, if we take a look at our current on the low end here, you can see here, we're still drawing about 350 milliamps. And if we take a look back at our idle, um, in between, in between events at idle, we were sitting at much lower. So I believe, yeah, we're at almost zero there. So we're at almost a third of an amp when this thing's under wide open throttle, which is kind of telling me that we're not exactly, uh, move this over here, that we're not exactly fully closing that solenoid. Uh, we got a longer wide open period, a little bit of adjustment in here. There's some known pintle humps because we're not quite at that wide open mark yet. So that's the data uh, that we captured with the scope. I don't know if that's uh, good or bad. I guess I, I didn't really know what I was looking to gather from that besides the fact that I just wanted to have it documented. Now. I compared that data to the old pump, the new old pump that was in there, whatever. I compared the two of them. They're almost identical. Um, I was hoping that I'd be able to pick something up in, in differences between the two. But again, we don't have bad and known good yet. We have two bad at this point. So I have the data captured. What I want to do is capture it afterwards as well, because then I'm going to take a look at that on time of the, the high pressure pump at idle. That 4.9 millisecond on time at idle might be slightly stretched, right? If we have an injector that's, let's say it's maybe partially clogged or, or for some reason the cylinder itself is running lean, we increase the on time to increase the flow into the cylinder, right? We give it more fuel, right? So we increase that on time. If we have a high pressure fuel pump that is a worn follower, worn, cam worn, follower, worn camshaft, then we have this, this air gap difference in between there. Our pump isn't as efficient as it should be. Therefore, our pump's not pushing as much pressure as it should be. Therefore, maybe we have to hold that, uh, that, that pulse width, that ground side control, we have to hold it slightly longer than what we normally should have to. So I'm, I'm fingers crossed the data is gonna show it. Once this vehicle is all fixed up and uh, happy as can be, no check engine light on, passes emissions, once all that occurs, I'm thinking and, and hoping that our, uh, our solenoid on time, our high pressure on time is actually then shorter at warm idle. So shorter from that 4.9 milliseconds, maybe let's say 4.5 milliseconds or something like that. I'm hoping we'll see a difference in there because our pump will essentially be more efficient. Uh, that's the data that we have and good or bad, hard to say at this point until we can compare it to something known good. We know that this is on an engine that's not running properly. So. We looked at our data, tried the fuel pump. Oh, before we get to actually inspecting the cam, take a look at this, guys. This high pressure pump was the one I put in there. And uh, here's a close up of both of the followers so you guys can see them. Here is, this is the follower that was 
um, in the pump that was in this, in this used engine that it came with. You can see how worn it is um, with that black dot in the middle. That's actually a raised section in there. And then here is the follower that I had just put in there with this pump. You can see how some of the black stuff is starting to wear away on there. This follower right here was completely black, painted black across the top when I installed it. I've only put about 100 miles on this thing and I already have significant wear, maybe not significant, but uh, visual wear on this follower. And again, this was not a brand new follower. This is the follower that came out of the engine that's got the hole on it sitting on the floor right over there. So it looked perfect. So hopefully that means my camshaft in that engine is good. It appears that the camshaft in this engine is definitely toast. So I guess um, it's time to take and, and tear into this engine a little bit, take a look at that camshaft. So this is a timing belt on, on this side engine, chain on this side. Uh, we can pop off these, these two pieces here and we should be able to go ahead and inspect that camshaft nice and close to take a look at what it what it looks like and I have a feeling you guys were right who called it was a bad camshaft I, I guess I didn't want to admit it to myself but here we go let's start ripping it apart So as you guys can tell, maybe, there is significant wear in that surface. And if I go ahead and take the straightest edge that I can think to find right now, you guys might not be able to tell, but the center it's like gone. There's actually a groove worn in the center part here and I can feel it, an indentation. It's basically like a, like almost like a U shape. Obviously it's not a complete U, but there's definitely an indentation in there. As we look at the side profile. Harder to tell, I guess. As we look at the side profile of the cam itself, hard to tell exactly if, if that edge is worn. Here is the cam in the engine that was in this car. And if you look, There's uh, no major scoring, no indentation on there. All right, so I think uh, these pictures definitely do the best uh, description. It's going to need a camshaft. Luckily the camshaft in that engine looks really good. Um, so I think it's going to be time to, to swap them out. But I'm going to have to get all the gaskets and everything ordered up to do this job. So that's going to be part three. In part three we're going to go ahead and uh, replace the, the camshaft on here. And it'll probably be a lot of time lapse type of thing. Uh, but I'll show you guys the, the key points in doing this. I won't show you me taking bolts out because that's boring stuff. But uh, yeah. We'll, uh, we'll change out the camshaft in part three and, and uh, hopefully get this car all fixed up and back on the road. Um, so yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, 
please give us a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Uh, click on that, that little bell icon down in the corner so that way you can get notified when we release part three. Um, I can't guarantee that it's gonna be a week from today, depending on part availability and, and my time to be able to work on this thing. Uh, we'll see. But uh, you guys will see it when it comes out. Uh, we'll get those, those cams swapped over and I'll probably take some real close up shots of the two camshafts side by side, that kind of thing. You know, all the fun stuff that we want to, that we want to see. And uh, fingers crossed when I take that engine apart, that that camshaft's in good shape. Uh, we'll see. The, the pump drive load looks good, but who knows what the rest of the cam looks like. Again, that's a motor that had grenaded upon itself. So anyways, again, thank you guys for watching. And as always, happy wrenching, everyone. Thank you.